If you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. That lead guitar is hot, but not for Louisiana man. So Rawls and up that Being the second largest city in Texas and the seventh largest city in America, San Antonio, Texas is a state with beautiful panoramic views, activities packed with tons of family fun, and wonderful historical sites. According to the Visitor Bureau and San Antonio Convention Records, nearly 26 million people tour this thriving city each year. Tourists can enjoy many destination spots such as visiting the Alamo, walking the Mission Trails, or soaring above the city in the Tower of America. However, in order to truly get a good taste of what this city has to offer, travelers should include the San Antonio River Walk to their menus. Even though the San Antonio River Walk is a popular tourist vacation spot, the river itself is a product of the effort, determination, and love of its people to preserve its natural beauty and elements. Therefore, it should be considered a historical site. The Paseo del Rio, which is better known by its famous name, the San Antonio River, is a magnificently made waterfront that stretches for two and a half miles. This beautiful attraction homes many of Texas' spectacular restaurants, shopping center, and hotels. Its revenue reaches millions that is generated back into the community. Even though this is a wonderful place to visit, early Texas history would lead a person to believe otherwise. During the early 18th century, the San Antonio River did not contain the depth or power of rushing water to be anything great. However, it did meet the needs of the early settlers. Spanish voyagers utilized the water for their mission. The five missions were positioned downstream from the river's head, which allowed the settlers to use the water for day-to-day -day tasks. Mission San Antonio del Rio, which is well known as the Alamo, was one of the first to benefit from the river. One major problem early settlers encountered was flooding from the river. The first recorded flood disaster was in July 1819. Flooding came from a combination of sources like the San Pedro, Apache, Alazan, and Martinez Creek. Because of the floods destroying their lands and home, many residents fled and had an unfortunate class with Mexican revolutionaries. It wasn't until the end of the Mexican War in 1848 that a small number of people returned to San Antonio. Freed from the threat of invasion, San Antonio began to blossom. In 1883, two entrepreneurs started a rowboat business, and in the 1890, machinery manufacturer Dennis F. Collins ran a steam launch daily with Sunday trips every 30 minutes. Many people enjoyed these trips and used the water for swimming and personal fun. Although the river was 15 feet deep in some parts, it was shallower in others, and it even lowered more during droughts. These problems would lead to the end of all navigation, and because of rapid growth of the city, the river was facing a terrible fate by the end of the 18th century. As the city continued to grow, it placed an impossible demand on the river. By the 1900, the river was so depleted of water that trying to sustain another drought seemed unrealistic. Driven by the love for their stream, the people of San Antonio rushed to their river's rescue. While the city's architect developed plans for improving the river, laws were put into place prohibiting cutting trees along the river side. A new administration made the river the focal point at City Hall and the results led to the river's first beautification project. Life seemed to rush back into the area of San Antonio. Carnivals and parades were held in order to get people to continue to enjoy the river's work. Flowers and more trees were planted to give the place a beautiful scene. All the labor that was being poured into the preservation of the river was still troubled by the unpredictable floods. In fact, the flood of 1903 resulted in the architect Francis Bowen having the courage to finally raise the issue to cut a new river channel straight through the heart of the city. Many members and businessmen debated back and forth on the idea, and on September 26, 1911, about three dozen citizens formed a meeting at the Chamber of Commerce headquarters and created the San Antonio River Improvement Association to address the problem. On September 13, 1921, the city stumbled upon its worst flood ever, taking a record of 50 lives. Damages were estimated around $10 million. 
Emergency food distribution served more than 20,600 hot meals and 57,200 sandwiches. City officials panic on the issue on how to handle the river. After hiring an engineering firm, the city began building the almost dam, which held back heavy rain and then slowly released it in various locations. But after many controversial fights to preserve the natural river bend, a new plan had to be adopted. A young man by the name of Robert H. Hugman proposed a plan that will build the river into a great place for the people of San Antonio and businessmen alike. His construction consists of developing apartment homes, clubs, parks, restaurant and boat riding. Hugman proposed his plan to city officials by stating that restaurants would be built on both sides of the river between Commerce and Crockett Street. He ended his vision by painting the picture of river boats fashioned after the granola of Venice, Italy. Hugman convinced city officials and businessmen on the benefits of making the river walk in the heart of the city only blocks from the Alamo. He believed that the plan would attract tourists and in return would bring money and growth to his beloved city. Hugman also addressed the project Channel Bypass Cutoff by suggesting that heavy steel floodgates be placed at the north end of the channel to regulate the flow of water through the river bend. After much consideration to the idea, city officials agreed to making the dream a reality. In 1936, during the Fiesta Week, manager of the Plaza Hotel and later San Antonio Mayor, Jack White sponsored a riverboat parade where a record number of nearly 10,000 people assembled to show their love for the river. White knew the business opportunity that Hugman's plan would bring to him and the city. In spite of all the opportunities that the river presented, it would be years before the river would become the masterpiece that Hugman envisioned. On March 19, 1940, Hugman was fired. Hugman claims that he was fired for political reason and city officials rebutted the allegation. They insisted that Hugman's dismissal was the result of him not following through with employing a landscape architect at his own expense and costing the city huge amounts of money. Regardless of what had happened, Hugman continued to support the project from behind the scenes by endorsing it and calling up on others to follow his lead. His reasoning for continued support was because he loved the city that brought him so many memories growing up. March 14, 1941 marked as the completion of the project. The glory of the river didn't last long. For the next 15 years, the river walk gained a bad reputation. The river being ignored resulted in the river becoming home to vandals and officially becoming off-limits to military members. High crime was prevalent and, once again, the river was looked upon as a bad portion of downtown. However, through determination and many years of work, the river walk was once again made the top priority and is now the beauty we see today. On November 1, 1978, a special dedication ceremony was held for Robert Hugman at the Armson River Theater, honoring him for his loving contributions to the San Antonio Riverwalk. The city presented him with a ceremony bell with the inscription in honor of Robert H. Hugman, Concept Architect San Antonio River. The ceremony bell was the largest of the five bells to be displayed at the theater. Today the San Antonio River flows 131 miles through six counties and empties into the Guadalupe River and the river's headwaters are natural springs that are part of the vast underground lake called the Edwards Aquifer. If you fall overboard, a tour guide warns, just stand up because the river is only four to five feet deep. Every year in January, the river is drained so that trash and other things can be removed from it. Luscious trees, waterfalls, and beautiful updated architects surround this entire area. The main tourist attraction is a powerboat tour. This 30-minute narrator cruise helps to bring alive the rich history of San Antonio. The San Antonio Riverwalk is important to the San Antonio culture and history because it shows the heart and willpower of its people. The river is enriched with so much history because the people cared enough to fight to preserve what is known today as the crown jewel of Texas.